Hey guys! Today I want to address the WTF, or what the fuck, Japan meme that is so popular everywhere right now. In case you're not aware, it's really common for people to post pictures or videos or articles of something in Japan that's weird, with the title and the majority of the comments being something like WTF Japan or Oh Japan or Only in Japan. So I'm going to give you two rules that you can follow that will work 99% of the time for you when you see stuff like this. I admit that I made that number up, but I promise you I'm not leading you astray on this. Rule number one, if you see something on the internet that says weird new trend in Japan, it's not a trend. <laughs> Rule number two, if you see something on the internet from Japan and it's weird, Japanese people think it's weird too. And there you go. You can stop watching this video right now because that's pretty much everything you need to know. But Rachel, why are they calling it a trend if it's not really a trend? I saw it on different websites with different pictures. Why would someone sensationalize a headline like that? It doesn't have to be for many though. Some people just get really excited about cultural differences and over-exaggerate things a little bit or don't fully understand what they're posting. Anyway, a handful of people doing something does not a trend make. Bagel heads is not a trend in Japan and never was a trend. Also, it started in Canada. Eyeball licking is also not a trend and never was a trend in Japan. I'm sure there's someone out there with a fetish for licking people's eyeballs, but that is not something that is happening all over Japan. Do not believe everything you see on the internet, except what I tell you. Even Japanese fashion subcultures are not that common in Japan. I mean, there are places that you're more likely to see them, like Harajuku or something like that, but in daily life you probably have about as much of a chance seeing a Lolita girl as you do seeing a gothic kid in America. Oh, and Gangoro is for all intents and purposes dead, and has been dead as a subculture since the 1990s. But what about weird things? What about those boob scarves I saw a long time ago? Okay, so I can't really cover all this WTF Japan stuff without getting into sexual content, so since that's not something I usually talk about in our videos or something we've never talked about, if that makes anyone uncomfortable, you can skip forward to 503. So boob scars are not a thing in Japan. If you see something like that, it's a novelty item. It's like something you would walk into a Spencer's in a mall in America and expect to see. Stuff like that is meant to be funny, it's meant to be a gag gift. No one is like seriously walking around with boob scars and being like, oh isn't this awesome, we're just so weird in Japan here with our boob scars. What about the panty vending machines? Okay, <laughs> I'm sure there exists one or two somewhere, but no one thinks that's normal and that's not normal in Japan. And really, the only thing that's strange about that is the fact that they're selling used panties in a vending machine. It's the vending machine part about that that's actually kind of unique for Japan. Because I promise you, the used panty selling business is alive and strong everywhere. Have you been on Craigslist? Because there are women, and sometimes men, selling used underwear in pretty much every city in America. This is not a Japanese fetish. This is a fetish that exists everywhere. It's not like Japanese people have an extra genetic sequence, the pervert sequence, that makes them have all these strange fetishes that are only found in Japan. No, fetishes exist everywhere. There is no fetish that you will find in Japan that you can't find anywhere else in the world too. But what about schoolgirl fetishes? They have all these little girls and they sexualize them in schoolgirl outfits. That is a thing in America too. Do you remember the reaction to Britney Spears' Baby One More Time video? No? How old are you guys? What about all the rape porn? Okay, rape fantasies are extremely common everywhere. Different studies have shown that over half of women and almost half of men have rape fantasies. That is not anything unusual and it is a completely normal aspect of sexuality. A fantasy is not the same thing as real life. People who have a rape fantasy don't actually want to be raped in real life or don't actually want to go out and rape people in real life. I don't know how much detail I need to get into here on this kind of stuff, but I'm an open person and if you guys need me to explain <laughs> this, like the differences between sex and porn and reality, I'm willing to make a video on that. I would much rather people have more knowledge and be more educated on this than avoid talking about something just because it's controversial. 
I drew you a Venn diagram here. And if you need me to, I can explain it. Okay, moving on. What about Japanese TV shows? They have all these crazy game shows and everything. Yeah, they do. And generally, they're pretty weird to Japanese people too. But that's part of what makes them so funny. And not to ruin it for you, but the majority of these shows are staged or at least partially staged. It's pretty common for people being pranked to be actors. There is a class of celebrities in Japan called Tarento, which is filled with a lot of different comedians. And they tend to overact everything in these shows because that's what makes it more interesting to Japanese people. No one wants to watch like a game show where everyone's just being calm and quiet and boring and things like that. We have shows like that in America too. Like if you watch Wipeout, they pick people who are crazy. Those people are acting out because they're on TV. I mean, maybe you have that one friend who is like genuinely kind of crazy, but that's not normally how people act. They're acting that way for the TV. What about weird Japanese cartoons? And not even anime, just like those weird cartoons that don't even seem to have a plot. Yeah, those are weird, but again, Japanese people don't really understand them either. They don't take like an understanding weird cartoons class growing up in school or something like that. And honestly, we have some shows that are pretty weird too. I mean, if anyone remembers Ren and Stimpy, that was a strange show. Even Spongebob can be pretty strange at times. Of course, that doesn't mean you can't find something in Japan that's normal to them and weird to you. I mean, really, weirdness is subjective, so whether or not you find something weird is going to come down to your culture and life experiences. I just want everyone to realize that while Japan has a different culture, there's still a globalized people who generally see a lot of things the same way that we do. And of course, it's fun to see weird and interesting things. I like watching them too. I'm not saying you shouldn't look at those articles or see those pictures or be annoyed with them or anything like that. I just want you to keep in mind that that's probably not normal in Japan. By the way, I shared some of those strange Japanese videos with June, and he wanted to say that he completely understands if foreigners find Japan weird after watching those. He reacted the same way to them that we do. I'll share some of them on our Facebook if anyone wants to see. Also, if you have any specific questions on things you've seen and you're wondering if that's weird in Japan or if that's normal, please leave your questions down in the comments below. I've asked June to make another video with Yuka to answer some of them, but I want to warn you right now that they're both really busy and it probably will be a really long time before they can get around to answering them. So I'm just warning you now. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Bye.